Hi, this is Mr. Bright again. I'm here to talk about properties, mathematical properties that you've probably heard of. I did notice on the last video that I did that it seemed to be coming in and out of focus if I was not on the screen, but once the writing got up on the whiteboard, everything seemed to be working fine, so we won't worry about that. Uh, the properties are just something that you kind of just have to memorize. It's almost like your addition and multiplication, the basic facts, you just have to know it. They're vocabulary terms. So I'm going to show you examples of each of those. I like to put these in the context of restaurants or some sort of story usually to kind of help make a little bit more sense. Let's start with the top three that normally most students have already heard of. It's just a review, but the associative property, the commutative property, and uh, the distributive property are the, the main three that you'll need to, to know. I'm going to mention some others as well, but let me start there. Well, the associative property has to do with when we take several numbers, uh, usually we deal with three numbers, and the associative property works for both multiplication and addition. But if we had a, a 2 plus 3 plus 4 that looks like this, the associative property says that since it's all addition, since it's all addition here with these three numbers, we can either have the 2 and the 3 associated, or we can have the 3 and the 4 associated together. In other words, it is equivalent if we take the 2 plus 3 first and get 5, and 5 plus 4 gives me 9, or if we would take 3 plus 4 first, get 7, and add 2, that gives me 9. This is called the associative property. This would be the same as if you went up to McDonald's, if you ordered, say, a hamburger and some fries first, and then that was all you ordered, and then afterwards you said, you know what, I want a milkshake, so then afterwards you ordered a milkshake. Well, that would be the same, you would pay the same amount of money as a friend who first ordered french fries and a milkshake, and they thought that that's all that they would, they would eat, but then they went back up to the counter and ordered a hamburger. Well, the, the two people are going to end up paying the same amount of money, because since all we're doing is adding up the items that you purchased, this is all just the associative property. So the associative property says it doesn't matter what order we multiply or add things in as long as that's all that we're doing. It's just adding or we could replace these by multiply signs and it would be the same thing. So that's the associative property. You can think of it as the parentheses are associating two different numbers or two different variables. The next property going alphabetically is the commutative property. And the commutative is like the simpler version of the associative property. The commutative property says that if we want to take just 2 plus 3, that that's the same thing as 3 plus 2. A lot of people say that this is commuting. The number 2 is commuting, like going to work, driving to work. It drives to the other side of the 3. So 2 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 2. Again, the commutative property works for both addition and multiplication. We could put some variables in here. If we had the variable x and y, which as you know are probably pretty popular in mathematics, that's the same thing as y plus x. And again, multiplication works the same way. x times y is the same thing as y times x. In other words, if you have two numbers, it doesn't matter what order you do that in. That's called the commutative property. And this is not really surprising after we've seen the associative property, which says that three numbers, if all you're doing is adding or all you're doing is multiplying, we could do that in any order. And that's, that's true here for just two numbers as well, the commutative property. The next is the distributive property. Students most often confuse this with the associative because it does have parentheses, but it serves a different purpose. This is when we have a number or uh, a variable times a set of parentheses. So we might have this parentheses here of 2 times 3 plus 4. Now we know from our order of operations that what we're supposed to do is the parentheses first because that's what draws our attention, that's the grouping symbol. This is really 3 plus 4 is 7, 2 times 7 is really what this is saying. 2 times 7 because remember no sign in here means multiply. So this is really 14. The distributive property says that this is equal to multiplying 2 times everything in the parentheses. So in other words, you can think of the 2 as being distributed to each of the numbers inside. So we have 2 times 3 
plus 2 times 4. Now again, following our order of operations, 2 times 3 and 2 times 4, those are multiplications, so that's going to happen before the addition. So I do my multiplication from left to right. This plus sign, plus sign stays in there. And 6 plus 8 does indeed give me 14. So we can verify that these two things are equal. So the distributive property is a number times the parentheses. And it basically says, take that number times everything in the parentheses. This is the distributive property. There are a couple of other properties that are worth noting and are a little bit easier, but these are the main three that you're going to for sure need to know this school year. Uh, and we'll be applying them. You'll especially need to know these and be familiar with using them for high school algebra next year. The other properties are fairly straightforward and simple. Uh, there's the identity properties. And the identity, if you think of the word identity, you know, it means who you are, uh, you know, what you are, your, your essence. And the identity property splits into two. There's the what's called the additive identity and the multiplicative identity. So in other words, there's the identity for addition and there's the identity for multiplication. And if the identity, if your identity is who you are, what we're saying is what can you add that will not change who you are? So in other words, if I have 7 plus something, what can I add to 7 that will keep 7 being 7? We don't want to change the identity of 7. We want it to stay 7. So what is that? Well, that's 0. So whenever you add 0, that's called the um, identity property of addition. Or you might say that 0 is the additive identity, because this is the identity when we're talking about addition. The, for multiplication, the identity property of multiplication, it would be the same thing, except now we're talking multiplication. 7 times what will not change the identity of 7? It will keep it 7. Well, 7 times 1 is all we have. So 1 is what we call the multiplicative identity, meaning if we're using multiplication, it keeps things the same. So those are the identity properties of addition and multiplication. And then another quick and easy multiplication uh, fact is the, the zero property of multiplication. And that's quite simply that anything times zero is zero. So 8 times zero is zero. 17 times 0 is 0. Negative a million times 0 is 0. 1.76543749 times 0 is 0. I think we get the idea here, even a variable x, if I take the variable x times 0, it is also 0. So that's what we call the 0 property of multiplication. 0 property of multiplication. And then there's one final property that I want to share with you, and that's called the transitive property. And the transitive property says this. Um, I often tell this story in class. I'll repeat it here. If, let's say that you have an aunt named Aunt Jemima. So I'll put AJ for Aunt Jemima. If uh, Aunt Jemima were to weigh as much as an elephant, then an elephant uh, let me pause there, sorry, that's okay. Hi, sorry, I, this is the first time I've done all this recording, so just got interrupted. I'm going to just finish with the, the last property there. So, again, let's start with our story. We have uh, Aunt Jemima here. My pen will work. Uh, Aunt Jemima, let's say that she weighs as much as an elephant. And then let's say that we know that an elephant weighs as much as a two-ton truck. Well, what do we know? If Aunt Jemima weighs as much as an elephant, and an elephant weighs as much as a two-ton truck, then what do we know about Aunt Jemima and a two-ton truck? We know that Aunt Jemima weighs as much as a two-ton truck. This is what we call the transitive property. And more simply, the transitive property says that if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then we know 
since A is equal to B and B is equal to C, we know that A must be equal to C because they're the same thing. So this arrow means implies. So A equals B and B equals C implies the fact that A equals C. And that's called the transitive property. I believe that's all the properties that we're going to cover for today. Uh, so sorry about having to do this two-parter. We'll try and keep it all in, in one part from now on. Thanks for watching.